floor and I see some guests in the meeting. Welcome all the guests. For those who don't know me, I am the president of the club, uh, Sheetal Vakchore. And I would like to start a meeting with some business announcement. Um, so first thing that I have uh, is our uh, elections on the June 10th. If you guys are interested in becoming one of the officers for the next term, which will be from July, uh, and it's it's the six months period. So if you are interested, you know, I would highly encourage you to talk to the current officers, try to understand the role, see if you can really commit, you, you really have time to commit to that role. And if you do, uh, you know, it's, it's a great experience. You will get a lot of opportunities to exercise your leadership skills. So if, if that is one of your goals, this is a great opportunity. So reach out to the current officers or any officers and try to understand the role and, you know, um, get in the elections and we'll see how we end up. The next one is our evaluations. Um, we have our evaluation workshop on the June 17th. And I don't know if any of you got a chance to attend the District 55 conference last weekend, but Tina D'Souza won the District 55 evaluation contest. And she is going to run our evaluation workshop. So this is a great opportunity to learn some new things about how to give constructive evaluations. So, you know, just, just block your calendar right now for the June 10th and the June 17th sessions. These are the sessions that you do not want to miss. Um, and then I see some guests. Uh, welcome, Connie. Co Connie? Connie? Uh, I hope I am pronouncing your name correctly. I, I can hear you. Hey, can you hear us? Uh, we cannot hear you, but I heard you just for a second. I don't know if you changed something, but we cannot hear you anymore. All right. I also see Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Welcome to the meeting. Hey, Jeff, do you want to introduce yourself? Just, just a little introduction of, you know, who you are and why do you want to join the club? Anything that you want to highlight? My name is Jeff Halpin. I have been active in Toastmasters heavily for the past four years. I'm currently a member of six active clubs, including Dell Speaks, and I'm just about to finish my Distinguished Toastmaster under the Legacy Program, but I'm currently an SR3 under the Pathways Program. And I also work with one of the clubs out of Plano, Texas, over the Zoom. So here I found out that with Zoom, we can attend almost any club anywhere. So it's a pleasure to be with all of you today. Oh, well, welcome to our club Toastmasters meeting and congrats on your DTM. Uh, I also see Ray. Hello, Ray. Would you mind introducing yourself? Good afternoon. I'm Ray Willis and I'm from Oklahoma, uh, working with multiple clubs as well and a club coach for three club coaches right now, or for three um, clubs right now. So we're doing a lot of things in Toastmasters. I've been for a while working on my third ETM and we'll see if we can get that worked out this year or not. Good to be with you today. Always look forward to seeing new people and hearing new people speak. It's always wonderful to get some variety. So thank you very much for having me today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ray. I also see Candy. Hello, Candy. Hi, I am Candy Fritsch. Um, I'm remote, so I'm in Colorado. <laughs> nice. Came to the open house a couple weeks ago, and I am 
actually going to submit my application to join next week. Yay! Welcome to the club. Thank you. All right, then I see, uh, is it Tresor? Uh, you are on mute. Good. Uh, hello, uh, everyone, and thank you for having me uh, here. So this is my second time attending here. Um, so um, I have been a member uh, for now going on uh, for seven years. So I'm just excited to be here and learn uh, from everyone else. Awesome. Well, welcome. All right, Connie, um, do you want to try it again? Uh, you're on mute. All right. <laughs> I guess there are some issues uh, with her mic. So we'll just continue with our meeting. Um, so I know uh, next weekend, it's, it's next, next week, it's the long weekend. So we will have low attendance next week. So, Veronica, is there something that you want to highlight for next week's agenda? Uh, yes, let me go ahead and share my screen really okay. quick. All righty, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, so for speeches, we only, the next available, if you're planning on making a speech or, or presenting a speech, the next available spot will be on uh, July 22nd. And it seems like that actually opened up because we have a few that are also packed after that. So if you're planning on presenting any speeches anytime soon, you know, trying to get ahead of your pathways, uh, make sure to sign up in advance uh, for especially because uh, it's, uh, speeches tend to fill in quicker than roles. Uh, what I usually do is just put my name in for all the speeches that I'm planning on doing for the next upcoming months. Do keep in mind that you want to keep uh, four weeks in between speeches. So make sure that if you sign up for a speech, wait four weeks until you can sign up, uh, present the next speech. Now, in regards to roles, uh, we definitely need your help. <laughs> uh, if you're planning on attending next week, we have a few roles available. We have the uh, role of Toastmasters is open. And we also have the roles of evaluator to evaluate, let's see who's presenting. Oh, she told speech. Uh, she told we'll be presenting. So uh, we need an evaluator for her. We also need a topics master and a someone to do timer and awards. As you know, we've merged the timer and awards role. So this would be the same person doing both uh, roles at the same time. So if interested, I'm gonna put the link on the chat and then you can go ahead and sign up or just let me know if you have any questions about the roles or anything like that. Uh, please let me know. And that's it for my part. Thank you, Veronica. And I am the Toastmaster of the day and I am going to share, where is the share button? The agenda for today's meeting. I right. hope you can all see the agenda for the meeting today. So we want to start with the role introduction. So first one, we have uh, our grammarian who is Mr. Andre. Andre, would you like to introduce your role and the word of the day? I would, Chito. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Andre Vines and I am your grammarian for today. Uh, there's a lot of excitement because today I was like, hey, let us create word of the day from Webster'sDictionary.com website. So today's word is flotilla, flotilla, sorry. Even, I've, even I'm having trouble with it. All right, and that is a fleet of ships or boats, typically naval uh, war, uh, small warships. And then also for my role, I will be, so I'll be checking to see who actually uses that word. And I will be counting your uhs, ums, likes, and other filler words. So everyone be on your best behavior. I don't wanna have to catch you. Okay, so do a good job. Thank you. Yeah, there's pressure today, Ava. There's pressure today, all right? <laughs> Been up since four o'clock working with Brazil, all right? We're, we're going for it today. All right, well, thanks. Maybe, on. maybe we should put somebody that's not angry in that role. <laughs> ah, 
Sean Doug. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna love me being the counter, okay? That's <laughs> gotcha. All right. Um, then we have our timer, who is Mr. Doug. Me. Okay. I am your timer. And I do want to verify one thing. Ava, your presentation is two to three minutes. Is that correct? I just want to make sure it wasn't a typo. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah she, she, I can tell you're excited about that too. Uh, at any rate, so I'm going to be your timer. Uh, you may want to pin me if you are presenting or if you're doing table topics. What I will do is when you reach your minimum, I'm going to go green. Uh, when you get to your middle of your presentation uh, or middle of uh, towards the end, I'll go yellow. And red is when you want to start wrapping up. You have 30 seconds after red, and at that point, you get disqualified. And just to uh, clarify for table topics, I don't know if we have any new people here today, but table topics is one to two minutes. So what happens is you get up in table topics, you have to talk for one minute. Um, if you don't, nobody like you know, sends police to get you or anything like that. But preferably speak for one minute. I go green, one minute and 30 seconds yellow, two minutes is red, and that's when you need to be wrapping it up. And I just want to go ahead and speak on that specifically if we have newcomers. That's Thank it. You. Oh, and I'm the awards as well. Sorry, I, am, I, I have two hats today. And so for the awards, um, at the end, you will uh, send me... Uh, only send it to me, not to everybody, but uh, in the chat, you will send me your uh, votes for who's the best presenter is, who the best uh, table topics is, and who's the best evaluator is. Thank you much. Awesome. Thank you, Doug. And then we have our table topic master, Ms. Veronica. All right. So for table topics, and uh, we will be doing some storytelling. So I think that we have actually a presentation on storytelling today. So it's going to be kind of a nice transition. Um, so if I'm going to be putting some pictures on a PowerPoint deck, you have to choose a number. And based on the picture that I show you, you have to create a story based on it. So if I show you a picture of flotillas, then you can create a story, uh, an adventure story about boats and whatnot. So <laughs> that will be what table topics will consist on today. Awesome. Thank you, Veronica. I am looking forward to the table topics. It's my favorite section of the meeting. All right, I think I have introduced all the roles. Um, for today's meeting, we have combined table, we have combined the Toastmasters and the general evaluator role. Um, so I will be the general evaluator for the meeting also. With that, um, I think we are ready for our speeches. Um, I am going to introduce our first speaker, who is Eva Quidi. Eva is giving her first speech for her level five project on team building. She jumped ahead in her path to take advantage of an opportunity. The purpose of this first speech is for the member to introduce the team building event she plans to host. This is a two to three minute short report. Let's welcome Eva with her speech. All right, and her speech title is Challenge Accepted COC Team Building Event. I just wanted to confirm that you can actually see the PowerPoint screen. We can see your screen, yes. Perfect. Don't start timing until I'm ready, Doug. Like, yeah, and just a minute, Eva, uh, for everybody else, whoever is new to this meeting, if everybody can go on mute, we will really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. Challenge accepted. I took on the task of building a team building event. And when I was looking at the different organizations I'm involved in, I had to pick which one I could do this with. The easy choice, the server COC. This is my team at work. And within that team, we have something called WCC, Winning Culture Committee. I am the social lead in this group. And so it was an easy choice to persuade my larger team that we needed to do a team building exercise. But then I had to pick 
some people to be on my smaller planning team. Who would I pick? I went with two very awesome ladies. You'll see Tanil here on the top and Robin on the bottom. They are both newer to the team, but they are enthusiastic and determined. And I get to use this opportunity to get to know them just a little bit more. I'm very excited to see what I can learn about them. And I've already learned a lot just from our first meeting. In that meeting, we had to go quickly and decide when we wanted to do this event. We chose Friday, June 11th. We picked a Friday because we had some survey results that actually said Friday was a good day to do events. It was surprising because we thought that perhaps people would want to go home and start the weekend early. But that's also why we chose to do something during the lunch hour and just keep it to one hour so that we don't take time away from the day. Then we had to think, how are we going to do it? Easiest way, Zoom. We all know it. We all use it. We're familiar with it. So we're going to be using the breakout room feature. And based on our historicals, we know that anywhere from 10 to 35 people will come to an event. So we're hoping for about 25. However, because of the type of activity we're doing, we can easily scale it down to even four people if that's how many people show up. But we are hoping for a few more than that. What are we doing? This was the hardest thing because there are so many different team building exercises that we could do. We decided to actually do a combination of two of them. The main one is going to be a social scavenger hunt. We're going to break up people into breakout rooms, give them a challenge list of things that they have to complete in the time, and the first team to complete them all wins. But we know that when people get into these rooms and they start doing activities, they want to go, 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 get the prize, win, win, win. But they don't take the opportunity to get to know their team members. So before we even give them that list, we are going to hold them captive for 10 minutes and make them do an icebreaker. Just like a table topic, we're going to ask them a question, have them go around their virtual room to find out something about the other person that they didn't know. All of this is to foster team collaboration. We want to deepen those relationships between our teams and create a sense of belonging, despite being in this virtual environment. But most importantly, this is to have fun. Fellow Toastmasters, I hope that this event goes well, and I can't wait to come back into this venue to tell you exactly what happened. Yay, thank you, Eva. I loved all your slides. Right. Match. <laughs> Our next speaker is Mr. Akhil Kashyap. The title of Akhil's speech, uh, actually, I don't know what the title is, but this is his introduction. Have you ever felt buyer's remorse after buying something? I know I have Akhil. <laughs> How could you have saved more? Remember, everything is negotiable. With that, please welcome Akhil. And for this speech, Akhil gets five to seven minutes. Okay, can I start? Okay. Have you guys ever felt buyer's remorse after buying something. The definition of buyer's remorse is you buy something and a couple of days later, you find out you could have bought it at a cheaper price and you feel dejected or sad. I have felt that so many times. Is there any way you can reduce buyer's remorse or save more? Of course there is. Fellow Toastmasters, friends, uh, today, I want to talk to you about some of my experiences in the US where I have negotiated stuff and saved, sometimes very substantially. Remember, everything is negotiable. Someone told me this when I was coming to the US and I didn't believe him. I was like, I think it's only negotiable in India, you know, where we discuss stuff, hey, you know, this is X, no, this is 0.5X, this is 0.2X, this is 1.5X, whatever. But remarkably, I feel that you can actually negotiate more in the US. Let me give you an example. 
we all know how crazy the austin market is the home market recently like four months back i bought a house in austin and in the i know you may call me stupid or crazy to buy a house in this crazy stupid uh bubblish market but the house is a is a thing you buy more from the heart than from the brain uh so we found a house and we wanted to get and when we wanted to get that now i had put 10 offers before on houses and never got one so but i didn't want to overpay so i went through what are the different steps in the home buying process the first step is finding a realtor okay the realtor the seller pays about 3% fees to the buyer's agent and 3% to the seller's agent that's 6% that's ridiculous but it is what it is then of course when you buy when if your offer is accepted which is rare nowadays uh you then go and find a bank who finances your home that is the biggest cost of a home and then of course you can spend any amount of money remodeling and making improvements in your house we'll not discuss that but if you break this down by the whole process if you look at the first process the first process is finding a realtor now for me personally i thought 6% is ridiculous fees how can you save that there are a couple of ways you could find cheaper brokerage agents such as redfin zillow those they normally take 1 1.5% so that's 2% to 1.5% savings substantially for an average of 500k house that is in savings are between 7 and 1/2k to 10k that's substantial savings uh the next step in buying uh, or the alternatives are go and get yourself a real estate agent uh title you can give an exam the exam is fairly easy to give you could say you could become your own agent and save all 3% i have i did some research on that and it is it is it's a 20 25 hour exam 20 25 hours of preparation and you could save that amount of money uh you could do that the third thing is what i did was do not keep any agent negotiate with the owner directly the seller's agent becomes your agent you have to do some kind of legal work so i did some legal work i created my own contracts etc it was i did uh, i spent about 3 days learning it online uh, going through youtube videos creating contracts but i was able to save 15k was it worth the time i think it i think it was there substantial savings right away moving on to the next phase once you decide to buy a house and your offer is accepted you want a bank to finance you or a credit union now i was told that credit unions are the che- uh, give you the cheapest loans in 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 the us me and my wife we both had 750 plus scores and we were expecting good rates and we got we were got a rate of about 2.8% 2.7% but i was but i wanted more and i f- and i work in a tech company so i figured out if i can find a tech company which can reduce all the uh issues that we have with the physical office and optimize that i could save more i researched online i was able to find an online broker which gave me a a rate of 2.5% plus i was plus a lot of discounts i was able to negotiate on appraisal fees and a lot of other fees and when i did the math i was able to save about 30k more but i was greedy for more working in sales strategy for the last two and a half years i have realized the biggest thing a sales people want is coming to them the most difficult part for sales is reaching going after customers here i went to chase directly and i said No, why don't you match this offer or beat this offer i wasn't to be honest i wasn't very hopeful but a couple of hours later i received a phone 
call back that you know we are going to beat that offer and i was happy so i was able to get a much better deal from chase compared to all the other banks credit unions etc so what did this teach me this whole process taught me that everything you do should negotiate on everything at least start with an ask if you don't even ask you will never get it you can negotiate salaries you can negotiate insurance you could negotiate buying a car etc so so fellow friends i hope this gives you hope that some you may not be able to avoid bias remorse completely but you may be able to save a lot of money thinking about the process thank you thank you akhil what a wonderful speech and congratulations on your new house so hope, hope you and your family are enjoying it and i learned so many new tricks about buying a house you know i recently bought a investment property but i didn't do anything that you just mentioned in your speech <laughs> yeah it was a really great speech akhil thank you All right. Thank you. Yeah, let's go on with our uh, next section of the meeting, which is table topics. All right, uh, Veronica, are you ready? Ah, uh, yes, I am. Let me just go ahead and share my screen. One second. And while Veronica is doing that, um, you know, all the guests are encouraged to participate uh, in table topics. It's it's really a fun um type of um interaction that we usually go through in our regular toastmasters meeting so everybody is encouraged to participate and luckily we have some time today uh yes so she told can you guys see my screen you can see a white screen is what you can see right okay yeah. cool yeah so uh like i mentioned earlier today today we'll be doing storytelling how this is going to work out is i am going to show you a small cartoon it can be a cartoon with like three different tiles two different tiles it all depends and you have to ha make up a one minute one minute one to two minute story on the cartoon so we can give it a go would anybody like to go first i know eva is excited because she had a three minute speech today. <laughs> so eva would you like to go first <laughs> I would love to though I I did have a speaking opportunity today. Oh yeah. <laughs> but it was short. <laughs> but since I see you so excited. Okay, I I'll, I'll go first. It'll just <laughs> pretend like, like it's a normal five to seven minute speech. Just add that. <laughs> right. Uh okay, Eva. Give me a number from 2 to 9. Um I don't know. Pick one for me. Uh okay. So I'll give you 2. Sounds kind of cute. There you go. All right, Eva. So here's a cartoon. It's a, a Snoopy cartoon from Peanuts. So it seems like uh, they threw the ball to Snoopy, and Snoopy didn't really want to play, and he just kind of like uh, drew all over it. And then now he's just taking a nap. So if you had to create a story for it, what would it be? So if you know anything about me, you will know that I am not much of a dog person. Just look here at Snoopy. Here he is drooling over that ball. And now you're supposed to throw it again? Could you imagine being I believe that's either Lionel or Charlie Brown and having to throw that ball like ew gross I'm getting grossed out just thinking about it. But perhaps that's part of the dog's plan. It's a conspiracy you guys. When a dog doesn't want to play, he'll drool on it intentionally. but then he'll give you those big puppy dog eyes to make it feel like it's your fault you're not playing with him. I tell you what, my cat does something similar. He will bring you that toy and you get excited and you throw it, he'll actually come and bring it back. But when he's done, the toy stays over there and he comes up and meows at you like what the crap, mom, go get that toy and throw it. But does he really want it? I think perhaps Snoopy and my cat Jinxie are in some sort of cahoots. because it does not make any sense for them to really want to play but 
Not really. So if I were, let's say, Charlie Brown in this case, perhaps get a ball that instantly dries like quick wicking athletic shirts and then see what happens. I love that. <laughs> I was trying to get myself up. That was awesome. That was great. All righty. Uh, anybody who would like to go next? Me. Uh, Jeff. Okay. So please choose a number between, I guess, now three and nine. Between three and nine? Yes, sir. Three. Three. All righty. So this one actually has no story lines to it. It's all images. So I don't, I don't want to speak on it because I don't want to give the story away. So Jeff, I'll hand it over to you and, and see what you come up with. Many pet shops have adoption options, which is a good thing because so many pets are returned or abandoned. And here we have this pet option of adopting hippos. And so there's so many hippos available. Aren't they all so cute? But which one do I want? I will have to decide on a very good one. Not just pretty, but also sweet and funny. Why? Because it's December. And my daughter had told me, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Only hippopotamus will do. Thank you. Oh my God, you guys are so creative. <laughs> you're so good at this. At first I was a little bit like, okay, maybe a little too hard, but you're killing it. <laughs> Jeff, that was awesome. An extra points for the singing, honestly. That was, that was so great. <laughs> Alrighty, who would like to go next? Anybody? Let me see the chat. It seems like we have someone in the chat. I'll take an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, Mina, let's say, please choose a number between four and nine. Let's go with um, five. Five. <laughs> this was kind of funny. <laughs> so, it's uh, this is an Archie cartoon. Mm -hmm. And, Coach, did I make the team? Sort of. So, what do you think happened here? Oh, hello, fellow Toastmasters. I don't know about you, but I am a huge fan when it comes to Archie. I mean, Archie comics are phenomenal. It's Archie and his best friends and his gang getting into all kinds of trouble. I mean, let's be honest. We have Archie here. Supposedly, he's the football jockey, but here he is taking a stab at baseball. Now, of course, the coach obviously knows his proudness for football, but baseball, on the other hand, is a whole nother story. We have our coach who loves Archie and obviously wants to give him a chance. But maybe baseball's not his forte. But he found something even better. To combat with the quick wits, the humor, and who knows, maybe his football skills. I mean, after all, we've learned for better agility for football players, they can go and do ballet or dance to help with that agility. He's given Archie the opportunity to take his hand and still be a part of the team. With running with baseball? No, with being the mascot. Yes, the team mascot of the Tigers to go cheer them on, to be able to attend the games, to be able to give that fun spin on baseball. And maybe after this opportunity, he'll think, okay, off my bucket list, baseball. Let's go back to football again. Can't wait for the fall semester. Thank you, everyone. That's so great. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm serious. You're also like you're also creative. I am very impressed. And I'm also a huge Archie fan. I love, I don't know if you've seen Riverdale. <laughs> That's like my new show right now. So seen Riverdale and all the different spin-offs too. So yeah. <laughs> all righty. Who would like to go next? Anybody? Andre, did I see you? Oh, Tresor, I did see your hand go up. Did I get that right? Awesome. Okay, so choose a number. You can choose any number between four to nine, except five, which was just chosen. 
Let's do a seven. Seven. <laughs> Sounds cute. So this is Garfield. Garfield, just like me, likes to eat. So if you had to make a story on what's going on here, it seems like he's dreaming. What would it be? Okay, so first let's start by reading what is shown here. So I see someone called uh, Garfield, and then uh, there is another buddy dog salivating next to him. And I guess they're both uh, owned by the two people that I see on the background. And on the next picture, I can see him dreaming of a very delicious food. And I am wondering if dogs eat this in the real in the reality. So on the next picture, it says, "Here I am in the land of large breakfast." So now he's actually dreaming that he is just slipping between food. So that's pretty much interesting here. Now he just starts eating the pancake, and he says, "This giant pancake uh, sure tastes good." So he's just tasting out uh, the pancake. Now, uh, after eating so much of it, he's just now salivating the food that he just ate. And then he wakes up and he says, oh, what a nice dream. And then he just tried to think, oh, snap, where is my blanket? Because initially he had the blanket, but at the end when he woke, he no longer had it. And my good guess is that he ate that blanket while he was dreaming, thinking that it was the food. Thank you. That was great. And yeah, if I had to guess, Garfield probably did do that. He eats anything that comes his way. So <laughs> lucky guess. <laughs> All righty, Timer, how are we doing with time? Can we do one more? Yeah, Veronica, we have time for one more. Okay, cool. Who would like to go next? I'd like to be our lucky winner for the last one. Anybody? I'll go for it. <clears throat> I just yes, finished up Michelle. <laughs> All righty, Michelle. Give us a number between four and nine that is not five or seven. Six. Six, 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 six. Oh, this was cute. <laughs> so someone was getting cranky on the road. What do you think happened here? My husband. If you have ever driven with him, you would know, and Ray probably has, he knows my husband. <laughs> uh, he has a mouth on him when he drives and he goes crazy when people go too slow. And he just starts ranting and raving and he wants to go faster than anyone else. So he will just slam on that gas and try to pass him even though he might go and, and completely miss his exit and or, as you see here, slam right into a light pole. That, my friends, is not a good choice <laughs> to do. So right now, uh, I limit his, his activity with his car <laughs> and his speed and let him know that it is not wise to make choices that may put him in situations to where he uh, will hurt himself or others and to practice breathing. Take some breath. Note that this car will pass. It will move. You will make it. You will live to see another day. <laughs> That's great, Michelle. And I can definitely relate. I think I'm that person that gets frustrated when someone in front of me goes slow. But then sometimes I'm the one that's going slow and then someone's being mean on the back. So that, that kind of like, oh, stop tailgating me. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> so everyone, thank you so much for participating. You all did great. I thought this was a little bit more challenging than usual, but I think you're all so creative and you all killed it. So thank you. Hand it over to you. Back to you, Chito. Thank you, Veronica. Such a fun topics today. I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. All right, everybody, it's time for evaluations. And today we have changed up a little bit. We usually give evaluations to all of our speakers. Um, but since today Ava's speech was only 
two to three minutes. Um, uh, we are changing it a little bit. If you guys can provide Eva your feedback offline on the chat or via email, uh, Eva will really appreciate it. But we are not going to have um, the, the we are not going to have anybody to give evaluations on Eva's speech today. So with that, um, we have an evaluator to evaluate Akhil's speech, who is uh, Michelle. So Michelle, are you ready? I am ready. And if I randomly meet you, it's because my dogs are fighting. Okay. <laughs> Akhil, all right. Thank you. I was really looking forward to your speech today. Anytime that you go in and do a, a table topic, it makes me laugh like crazy because you've got so much personality and that smile is good. Don't cover it. Let us see it. <laughs> we love to see that smile. That smile is the one thing that you can use as body language that's stronger than anything. Uh, so I loved when I saw your smile during that. Now in your speech, you were being evaluated based on your body language. And what I saw and what I, I feel I interpreted was you telling a story and utilizing your gestures in a way that you would if you were directly in front of me using it, but not necessarily planned out to make sure that they gave the emphasis to really to capture your audience and, and stress the specific topics that you were discussing. With the background, uh, one, I would love to see a background that was, um, so I, I only know this because I was in the last one, so that you've used that background before. I like that it's houses, it's still related, <laughs> but you could have maybe used a background that, that worked with your story and or, a, um, or even a PowerPoint to show some of the numbers so people weren't trying to count or separate when you talked about the percentages and the, some breakdowns. I love the fact that you came back to it though, because you started off 6%, very clear, concise. There was a few other topics that came in that I felt a little confused. And then you came right back and was like, okay, we're talking about this 6%. Here's how you can do X, Y, Z. So I love that you brought it back and made it very clear. Um, so that, that was really good. And I could, I could see, um, I could almost see you going through and doing um, this activity with um, with your friends and, uh, and family and just trying to find a home. So that was really exciting. You've got a lot of energy. Use that energy to be you. We all want to see you, not the person you think that we want to see. We want to see a kill because that is who we know and love. We want to use that energy to be reflective with your body language. There was a few times you started swaying and or decided to kind of move the camera angle to get better. Uh, as well as there was a time in which you stepped back in the conversation, but it wasn't necessarily planned as part of the conversation. So it came across as perhaps you were trying to retreat from your audience uh, because you might not have felt as comfortable um, as, as you wanted to in that moment. And you're not stupid. Don't use the word stupid. <laughs> the crazy, I love the crazy. Like you gotta be crazy. You know, so you could have done a whole lot more. I wanted to see you get wild and, and animated. So I'm excited to, to see this again and, and have you come up and show us more of you because that was really great. I loved the story and we all gained a lot of information out of it and you achieved your purpose in it. Great job, Akil. Hey, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah, if you have any feedback uh, for Michelle or for Akhil, please provide it offline to them. All right, next we have our timers report. Uh, Doug, do you have the timers report ready? I do have the timers report ready. And rather than going through all of that, I'm just going to paste it right now in the chat to everyone. And there you go. So, uh, and you'll see that Michelle on table topics is a question mark because I was so enthralled at what she was gonna say, I forgot to start the timer. So I guessed on hers, but I'm sure is right. Um, but everybody else is good. Uh, and there we go. And 
at this point, uh, I'm also going to be doing awards. So if you would all please send me your uh, vote for best uh, speaker and also best table topics, there is no reason to vote for evaluations because I think Michelle's got it. At any rate. <laughs> all right, that's it for me. Thank you, Doug. All right, Andre, do we have our um, grammarians report ready? We most certainly do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our big winner today is Veronica for using the word of the day. Impressive. That's, that's all I got for you. You know, I, I plant seeds. I can't explain it. Uh, and as it goes for our ah counter, we all love the word ah. Um, that's our that's our absolute favorite today. Uh, and we had a couple of restarts, but everyone did exceptionally well for the most part. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Andre. Uh, Doug has already introduced himself for the awards and please send your um, number one and number two choice uh, for the speaker and the table topics. Uh, while we are doing that, I can give the um, general evaluation of the meeting or actually I see Mino in the meeting today. Mino, would you like to give us feedback on our meeting today? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, I love attending y'all's club meetings. I mean, I wish I could have came a lot sooner and a lot more, but it is what it is when three clubs and my own club, so four clubs, um, all meet on Thursdays. So it's always a fun time to like dabble and all that. But again, I always love coming to y'all's meetings. Ava, I loved the visuals. I kind of wished your speech was longer than two to three minutes because I just loved the visuals. And again, I'm excited to see the second half of when you've completed this project. Definitely want to see how the speech goes and how it progresses. Akil, I've learned a lot from your experience in house hunting. Um, I don't know how confident I am that I will obviously not use a broker, but the, some of the things that you said about like drafting a contract and all that stuff, I've definitely heard it myself a couple of times before because I have a cousin who like is not a broker, but he is a lawyer and has done that. Now, again, do am I confident that I can do it myself? No, but I know I can come to you and ask for help. So, <laughs> so there's that. Veronica, your table topics was amazing. Um, I loved the creativity that came from just having a story and then being able to tell it. Um, I got lucky again because I actually I do love Archie so I do know some context so it helped in portraying that story but again everyone had their own twists and turns. Um, overall I love the meeting. I love that we have all the Michelle your evaluation. She's not there but she did a great job in her evaluation. So tons of helpful feedback. Overall, I think this meeting is amazing and I love it. My only comment that I do have is I know obviously because of work and meetings back and forth, but I know there was when I joined on with um, two other guests, we were the only ones there for like a couple of minutes. So uh, just a recommendation, maybe having like, if anything, even if y'all are like engaged in a meeting, just having like one officer on just to be like, hi, everyone will join shortly. So but that's my only comment. Hey, thank you for your feedback, Mino. And uh, in addition to Mino's um, evaluation of the meeting, I would like to add one more comment, which is I am really impressed with all the video presence over here. You know, I still remember last year in March when we started, we had about one or two people joining, uh, joining this meeting and, uh, having the video presence compared to that. Today, we almost have everybody on the video. I know Robert, you were also, your video was on when we started the meeting. So I would count this as a 100% video presence for today's meeting, which is really awesome. So thank you everybody for that. And it really matters for the online virtual meetings. All right, uh, Doug, do we have our awards ready? 
Uh, we do, and for the sake of time, I didn't get a chance to uh, make some slides, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and read them off. I actually like to give, like, you know, the, the, the speech, it was a Kia one out, but it was actually a three to two. So, I mean, Ava, you were right in there. Uh, it's really, really close. And Table Topics was uh, exactly like that again. Uh, Jeff, you won out with three. Michelle, you were second place with two. So great job, Michelle, as well. Uh, and that is our... Uh, our uh, awards there. You're saying I, I should have voted to... for myself. <laughs> yeah, if you had voted for yourself, it would have been a solid tie. <laughs> I'm proud of my vote for Jeff. <laughs> Good job, Jeff. Yeah, thank you, Doug. All right, so um, I want to close our meeting with our guest feedback. So, Candy, can we start with you? If you can provide, you know, any kind of feedback, if you like the meeting, if you would like to, you know, join, whatever you want to provide. I like the meeting very much. Um, Table Topics was really, really entertaining to watch. Um, I tend to be quiet until I get the lay of the land a little bit. So, um, but yeah, I will definitely send my application in next week. And... I look forward to learning more and growing more and and thanks. Hey, thank you. Great to have you, Candy. <laughs> Ray, Jeff, uh, Tre Trezor, do you guys have anything that you want to highlight? Or Connie, I, I hope your speaker is back up. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. I had a terrible problem there for a moment. Thank you guys for letting us join today. And I commend you for having a lively, entertaining, well-planned meeting. I noticed that you did stay on time. I noticed I, I was concerned at first there was too much chatter, but you were right on time when you started the meeting. So good job there. And, you know, just echo everything that's already been said. The purpose of the meeting is to give constructive feedback. So definitely always things that we can do better. But just having a meeting with 15 people on is a success in my book. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Ray, I know you raised your hand. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come into the meeting today. It has been lively. It's been exciting and a lot of fun. I look forward to coming back on the 17th to hear more about the evaluations and how that works out as well. So have a great day and enjoy. Hey, thank you, Ray. And yeah, please, please join the 17th session, which is our evaluation workshop. Yeah. And I just wanted to add by saying thank you. So I really uh, liked the meeting, especially uh, looking everyone facial expression. So that was uh, really good. And uh, especially uh, IKL uh, relentless uh, and uh, just dedication on finding the best deal. So that was a good thing uh, that I have learned uh, today. So thank you again uh, for having us. Thank you, Trezor. Jeff, do you have any uh, anything? Thank you so much for having us all here today. Pleasure to meet all of you. Hope that we can do a joint meeting again. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. I will see you all in our next meeting. Have a good uh, great long weekend. Bye, thank everyone. you. Enjoy your memorial Bye. weekend. Have a good long weekend. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Chito or Ava, if one of